Parakyesh Nochlin Dav Kufchav Gimel, sponsored the Rafu Shleima for Yerachmiel Eliyahu Ben Esther Riva. The Gemara begins with a fundamental question. Is the double portion of firstborn receives two-thirds of the whole estate and the remaining third the rest of the brothers divide, or the Bechor receives one additional portion? If there were five brothers, the estate would be divided in six parts. Number one. On the day that he bequeaths to his sons. This verse refers to the father's additional sons. It teaches two or more additional sons are entitled to an inheritance as much as the firstborn. This would not result if he always inherited two-thirds of the estate. The Gemara brings a second proof because this verse may be the source of Rabbi Yochanan ben Baroka, that a father can bequeath his whole estate to one son. Number two, Uvnei Ruvein Bechor Yisrael, Uvechilolo Yitzui, Bechor Asol the Yosef. The verse compares Yosef's extra portion to all firstborn based on the common terms Bechorah so, the low Mishpat HaBechorah. The Gemara brings a third proof because the words Bechorah so or Bechorah do not match exactly for a Gezer Shava. The third proof, verses stay, HaBechorah Yosef, the low Mishpat HaBechorah. An analogy between them teaches, just as Yosef received one additional portion, Ephraim Umanasha, the land was divided among 12 as opposed to 11 tribes. The same division applies for all future firstborn. Yaakov told Yosef he accomplished this by way of Charbi Uvekashti, prayer and supplication using his coal, his voice, as opposed to his uncle and brother who used the sword, bow, and arrow. The verse of a fourth proof is the main proof for considering one additional portion. Nasati shchem echad achad al achecho. However, this could be interpreted a little more land, not a full portion. Therefore, the fifth proof, Ephraim Menashe, the verse states, Ela told us Yaakov, Yosef. The first descendant of Yaakov was Yosef. The Gemara states two reasons why the birthright was transferred back to Yosef. Number one, Kadmasa Leah Barachamim. Leah preceded her only through prayers for Hashem's mercy. Her eyes were sensitive from crying also during prayer, begging for mercy not to marry Esav until her eyelashes detached. Hashem saw her great righteousness. She was snua, meaning she despised Esav's behavior and merited long eyes, rakos miloshen aroch, meaning her gifts were longer than Rachel's, from Levi descended Kohanim and from Yehuda Malchus. Number two, Sneas to Rachel, the modesty of Rachel who passed signs of her identity to Leah so she would not be embarrassed. Love and scheme was not to be known until the morning. The Gemara explains why Yaakov decided to head home after Yosef's birth. His confidence to confront his brother was from his prophecy that Yosef's descendants would conquer Esau. King David and the sons of Shimon waged war against Amalek and succeeded together with soldiers of the tribe of Menashe. Abraisa elaborates on the law that a firstborn acquires a double portion of assets the father possessed before his demise. If the father was a Kohen in possession of priestly gifts or consecrated offerings, he is entitled to a double portion. Number one, the Zerah L'chayayim V'keva. He received from Akire Kahuna, good friends that always give him their gifts slaughtered the animal while he was still alive. This Tana holds gifts requiring separation are as if separated, belonging to the father even before their separation. 
Number two, consecrated offerings referred to by the Bryce as Kachim Kali. According to Rabbi Yossi, Aglili, before it's slaughtered, it is his property, since most of its meat and hide belongs to him. The father dies before bringing the sacrifice. The firstborn inherits a double portion. If you're enjoying Daffin 5, please click on the link below, subscribe, and become a sponsor. Thank you.